the very first club I ever went to was the standard in Piccadilly Circus facing Eros um, on the south side, which doesn't exist today. And it was a most amazing, it wasn't actually a club, it was a pub. But in those days, and we are talking in the late, the middle, of the beginning of the 1950s, and the war hadn't been over that long, and it meant there were lots and lots of foreign servicemen still in London. Uh, Polish soldiers, there was American airmen and all this sort of thing. And what was so unusual about the standard was that most gay pubs in London at that time wanted to hide away gay people. We were still something that people pretended didn't exist. So they'd hide you away on the, in the basement, usually. Well, the standard, um, a very big club, pub, sorry, um, but they hid the heterosexuals away in the basement there, and all the gays were on the first floor. You went straight in off the street, and there were all these marvellous men, hundreds of them, packed so tightly together, particularly if you went on a Saturday night, as was my first experience. And if you wanted to get to the bar, it took you several minutes to do so. It was on the other side of the room. And you'd have to elbow your way through to get to, get to the bar. Uh, and you'd got your hands up and you were, being, you were so tightly packed that you were being groped. Uh, all these smiling faces were around you. But you didn't know who was groping you. You were looking at these faces thinking, who did that? Who did that? And uh, of course you couldn't see their hands, their hands were down. As I say, you're all so packed tightly. Normally during the week I'd wear a business suit, so I had to go in these tight trousers, so tight I couldn't bend my knees, and a scarlet and black shirt, which in those days made you look like something from another planet, because in the 1950s um, people just didn't have bright clothes at all. And we'd been stared at before we'd gone into the pub, because we looked like a couple of freaks, I suppose. I was told not to wear any underclothes, which I hadn't. And the boy who'd taken me, he had um, no underpants on and he had a leather jacket but no shirt underneath, with a cowboy scarf round his neck, long leather boots. Anyway, as I say, he knew London so well and the London crowd knew him because we hadn't been in there five minutes and he got talking to a group of people at the bar and one of them turned out to be a television presenter, uh, who was very famous in those days, um, Daniel Farson, who had a boat on the River Thames, which he kept near Tower Bridge. And I said to the boy afterwards, oh, you know, who was that familiar face? He said, Daniel Farson. And I said, oh, is he here looking for some talent for his television show? Oh, no, 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 he's looking for some talent for his bed, he said. <laughs> <laughs> and that sort of struck me as rather funny. Anyway, the next moment, he happened to spot somebody going out of the door over these heads, someone he hadn't seen for ages, and he said, do you mind if I leave you just for a few minutes? And I said, oh, for goodness sake, don't leave me in this strange bar, you know, all alone. I'll only be a moment, he said. Anyway, he was gone for quite a while, and as I stood at the bar, I heard, looked along the bar, and there was a couple of, Italian looking men leaning on the bar further along, three or four feet away, and I suddenly heard one say to the other, oh I fancy that in the red shirt. And without thinking I looked to my left to see if there was somebody in a red shirt, then the penny suddenly dropped. <laughs> they were talking about me and I was so scared because I'd never had sex uh, or anything, I was a complete virgin, but I was so shocked bit stupid, you'd think, no. Anyway, I thought I can't stay here a moment longer, so I headed for the door, elbowing my way again through the crowd to get to the door. When I got outside, there were people coming and going, of course. I had to wait about 15 minutes before this friend of mine turned up again, and I was really angry, and I said, where the hell have you been? You said you'd only be a few minutes. He said, well, I couldn't resist it. He said, I hadn't seen that boy for ages. And he only lives around the corner, so we just went back to his place for a quickie. And I said, well, while I've been standing here, I've had about six people ask me if I want to go in for a drink. 
And he said, well, what are you angry about? You should be delighted. He said, I wouldn't mind being propositioned half a dozen times like that. You don't know when you're lucky, he said. <laughs>